Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes out is from Tyrone. Hey Brian, been a fan for a while now. I'd like to start with Ether Rome, The Sun, The Moon, The Stars. For the longest time I've been looking for reactions to this song but it never got any even though it's their most popular song and some of their other tracks had reactions. It's since had two reactions, but I'd love to see my favorite music reactor's opinion on it. It's a melodic death metal song that tells one of my favorite fantasy stories in music. Hope you enjoy. So, let's dive into this. When it comes to mellow death, I get a little apprehensive. Uh, it is one of the extreme metal styles that I have the largest affinity for, but it's still something that I tend to enjoy, a smaller subset of it. Uh, because primarily the melodic component can range from anything from more melodic than regular death metal to wild symphonic style writing. Um, and I definitely lean more towards the latter. Regardless, we have a 19 minute mellow death epic ahead of us. Without further ado, let's dive into it and see what Aether Realm is bringing to the table today. The chip tune still feels a bit out of place, but definitely starting big. Great concept of in media res. Start off with the excitement and then bring it down. Even here, only a couple minutes into the track, you can already feel the epicness. It's a very large sound overall. That's the other side of the equation too when it comes to uh, Mellow Death is the vocalist. I'm holding my opinion for now on that. Oh, okay. I was going to make a comment on the production of the last section. 
it makes sense in this context though. are very prominent in the mix though. These are my favorite moments so far where it feels like the band can really lean into their legato melodic style. I wish that the heavier riffs Oh, not like this one. <laughs> I wish some of the other heavier riffs, though, would get rid of all the pedal tone stuff. Yeah. I guess it's cool for metal, but I feel it disruptive to the melodic component. And I really love hearing that pure melody in the, uh, the more reserved sections. Very clear vocal enunciation though. Yeah, why can't we have more of that? I'd like, I'd like to order another round of whatever that was, please.
It's like uh, we've shifted from that epic feeling at the beginning to something a bit more distressed. Surrounding the distress though is this warmth. Like a sushi roll. Distress in the middle, warmth on the outside. Very percussive bass sound. Just such a fat tone. It's it's just it's very chuggy. momentum like out of that distress a plan was formed Basically, it's a very powerful section, uh, very uplifting, very odd that it's pushed right up against this somberness.
The horns and strings are doing a lot of heavy lifting on this part. Elevating it far beyond what anything else in the band is doing. I like this moment. A nice rhythmic change of pace, focus on melody, harmony between two drastically different timbres. Love the placement of all these chimes, bells. Even that electronica, that right there. The ambient synth in the background. This is a gorgeous moment.
All right. I want to preface this real quick with a topic that I don't think I've spoke about in this capacity on the channel before, and it honestly kind of makes me think I should start a blog of some sort where I can talk about more general topics, because I know people come here for the reaction, and I'm going to take five minutes not talking about Etherome at all here, but I don't have any other platform to do this on currently, and it's on my mind at the moment, so let's dig into it. My tastes fluctuate week by week, it seems. Um, I think part of it is just that metal is new to me. And while I might really be in the mood for a specific type of metal, it's still a genre that, on the whole, is not something I typically go towards on the daily. And so, while death metal traditionally has been a... A, a traditional, I think is the wrong word there, historically has been a genre that has typically worked for me on some levels. It's still an extreme metal genre, and I have to be in an extreme mood for it. I, I do kind of envy people who can just wake up and <laughs> instill a groggy mindset, turn on some of the most brutal music in the world, and just be fine with it. Um... It is, it is something I have to be in the mood for, and I was not in the mood for this. There's a lot of parts in here that just didn't really work well for me, even though I think that maybe on another day I would have really enjoyed this. And so, I'm going to stick as close to an objective read of the song as I can, trying as often as I can to not dip into my personal feelings about the track. One, because I don't think it would be uh, something worthwhile going into. Uh, and second of all, because it's primarily going to be a, a mid-response or a negative response. But third, because tomorrow, they might not be my opinion on the track. And tomorrow is any day in the future, of course. And so I just think it's really... It's an interesting topic. I don't think we too often think about people's tastes as being amorphous. And I'd wager that maybe the general idea of people's tastes aren't amorphous. A metalhead is going to love metal every day of the week. Maybe it is more of a specific situation of mine, where I primarily react to music I don't enjoy. Ah, man, that is a strong word. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just not what I would typically listen to if I had a choice. I don't hate most of the stuff y'all give me, uh, but it's rarely anything I'm going to go out of my way to listen to in my own time. And so, like I said, maybe it is just a special situation here. Maybe if we listened to more classical or jazz or rock, maybe even alternative metal, something on the softer side, uh, I wouldn't have this this concept here where some days I might enjoy a song more than others and the reaction might be drastically different between two different days. But there's also another concept that I do think I'm going to save for some other platform. Maybe I'll tweet, not tweet about it, text it in social media. Um, I do have a Mastodon. It's I'm pretty sure it's in the link tree. I don't know many people who have Mastodon, but I, I do. Um, but it's, the, it's this idea that I've kind of become disillusioned with metal. I think maybe if I had heard this a year and a half ago, I would have been all over it. When metal was still fresh to me. But the more I listen to it, I think the less of it I like. I don't know. It's something I have to further ex dig into before I feel like I'm at a point of understanding that I want to express it. But... It was something I started to be, I began to think about during this reaction, was just how much I didn't want the metal to be in here. 
I really enjoyed the song when it wasn't being metal. Like, really enjoyed it. And I wish the whole 19 minutes had been non-metal. So, like I said, I think I'm going to save that for another day. But it is something that popped up in my mind, and it's an interesting topic. With that said, let's get into Etherrealm. First, I want to start off with a lot of the positives. The production here is phenomenal. Uh, let me check this out. 2017 makes sense. It has a very modern feel to it. That's not to say older metal albums can't have this type of clarity um, and production, but that they just typically didn't. I'm always surprised when I hear something from the 90s and even most of the 2000s having really solid, clean and clear production. Uh, so it just makes sense that this is a bit on the newer side. Phenomenal, though. Every instrument is clearly placed um everything can be heard precisely so some of these sections have a lot going on and there is no no muddiness at all i can hear exactly every piece of it but it doesn't detract from any of the power of a lot of these instruments coming together not necessarily making a wall of sound but just working together to amplify what they're doing there's still that powerful metaliness to a lot of this track. Uh, and the production is just magnificently handled in order to achieve both the clear layered melodic elements and the heavy aggressive angsty metal side. And this also lends itself into the vocals, which are interestingly kind of mainstream feeling they are quite a bit louder than anything else in the mix uh, especially some of the sections where the hush <laughs> where the vocals and guitars and drums were the only instruments the synth was the second loudest instrument and when it was removed you could really hear the difference between what the guitars we're doing way down here in the volume and the vocals just overpowering everything. I find this to be a bit interesting primarily because the vocals are harsh and a lot of harsh vocals tend to get tucked into the mix a bit more than clean vocals in rock and metal. Um, but also because the vocals end up sounding nice because of it. Like it's still a rather static harsh. It feels like it should blend into the background more than anything else, and it is the least melodic part of this mellow death metal. But I could hear every word. The chorus was clear. The third time the chorus came around, I decided to stick with the lyrics and see if I could hear what was going on there, and I, I could. I picked up every word. It was kind of fascinating. I don't know if some of that is just me developing an ear for harsh vocals or if uh, you know, it's part of the, I'm sure a lot of it is on the production. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting here, but I've come a long way too. But I was just, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, a light bulb moment. And I'm like, oh, I can do this. That's neat. Like, you know, I'm getting around to understanding this. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. It's, it's odd. The most melodically simple, I was going to say boring but i switched up from melodically simple component of the of the melodic music is what gets the spotlight and it feels a bit backwards to me uh, but it makes sense when you bring in everything like i mentioned the synth or the keyboard is the second loudest instrument on this track consistently and when it is present the vocals can barely be heard so the vocals are mixed volume wise to sit on top of the uh the synth it just makes it feel a bit odd when the synth is missing um but yeah just production solid across the board even in that slightly odd decision there it ends up working out the guitar work 
as I mentioned during the reaction, a lot of this guitar work is pedal tone heavy. You might hear a little three or four note melody, and then we return back to a pedal, and then a little melody, and then a, come back down to the pedal. There's always a pedal tone. Well, always is wrong. It's like, it's pretty high up there. 60, 70, 80%, a vast majority of the time, there's pedal note usage in the melody. Some of our melodies are even constant 16th note picked. Um, the vocals don't provide any melody, and the synth usually gives us atmosphere, chord progression. There are moving lines in the synth with all sorts of instruments. Uh, there's a flute at one point, there's strings, there's brass. Uh, the, the synthesizer picks up a lot of... Uh, the auxiliary instrumentation in, in this track. So it does get some melody here and there, but for a lot of the sections, especially the metal-y sections, it's chord progressions while the guitars do their pedal tone riffage. And uh, it provides the atmosphere around the group. Now, on the topic of pedal tone riffage and constant 16th notes, is metal afraid of holding a note out? And if so, why? I think that is my biggest complaint with this track. And it's not anything specific to this track. I think it's just kind of metal in general. Maybe it's the aggression. Maybe it's the roots, the origins of metal. Well, well I guess it depends on how far back. Because like... Black Sabbath had no problem holding a note out, and that is the origin point of metal. So somewhere between Black Sabbath and the modern concept of black metal, death metal, pretty much all the extremes, we, we, we kind of reached a point where things have to be fast, constant. And so there's a lot of sections in here that I think would sound phenomenal if they just strum once and allow the note to hold out, whether that means... Uh, you know, if you're doing constant 16th notes and you only change your notes every bar, just a whole note. Strum it, two, three, four, next bar. Strum it, two. You don't need to just keep going on it. You really don't. And so, like, this can also apply to the pedal tone stuff. The pedal tone tends to fill in the space between other notes. So we can't have quarter notes in here. So we'll sometimes alternate between the note we want for the melody, the moving note that sits up here in the pedal tone, which divides it up into eighth notes. And the downbeat is going to be the note for the melody, and the offbeat is going to be the pedal tone. And it just sort of bounces up and down like this. But if you remove the pedal tones entirely and just make each of these notes a quarter note, the melody is gorgeous. But it loses a lot of that legato beauty that I think a lot of these melodies are trying to lean into and exchanges it for this aggressive speed. And not only that, but we don't ever really get to hear many of these notes have length to them. There's no body to them. It's just constant attack, which is hyper aggressive, which feels contrasty to what they're trying to do. And obviously, I'm wrong here. I'm going to put wrong in quotations because there's no right or wrong in music, but this is not a small band. And it's not like this is the only band that does this. So obviously this formula works. But to me, it does the opposite of what it wants to do. It's like trying to run fast and putting tar on your shoes. I don't know if that's the right substance I want, but something that's going to slow you down. And yeah, maybe the end result is that you make a, a tar running sport and it's, you know, it grabs massive interest. And that's fine. You've done something that works, obviously, but the goal of making something melodic and flowy and legato is gone. There is a, a pull here, even if the end result works well, you still have something working against itself. And 
Honestly, for my taste in music, I feel that if they would just allow these melodies to breathe rather than trying to cram 16 notes into every bar, the song would sound phenomenal. They could really explore some stuff instead of letting themselves be limited by the metal. Dang it, I said I wasn't going to get subjective. Um, we're going to stick to objectivity for the rest of this. <laughs> um, the story of the song, you know, where everything goes. I, I mentioned a couple of emotions throughout here. It's it's epic in journey. We start off the song epic. We start off the song with chip tune. Anybody want to clue me in on that one? I, I said it felt out of place a couple minutes into the track. The end of the track... I still feel like it's out of place. It makes no sense to me. Uh, maybe it connects better on the album. Uh, the track before it is Temperance, and maybe that ends with a chip tune. Maybe that whole song is chip tune ish, or the synth uses a chip tune tone for its entire bit. I don't know. Like I said, maybe it works better on the album, but in a vacuum, it feels very strange, very out of place. Uh, but it is a neat way to introduce any concept. You start with something smaller, more compressed, quieter, you introduce the riff in this concept, or in this context, and then you expand it out to the full sound. Like, this is something millions of bands have done. Uh, it's really just the choice to use chip tune that feels a bit odd to me. Anyways, though, we start the song off, and it is pure, epic, fantasy soundtrack kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's going on a big adventure vibes all throughout. The guitars are bright and loud and high pitched there's a lot of energy to it a lot of forward momentum we have a very wide instrumentation with the strings and the horns and it just feels very larger than life and we experience this for four or five minutes maybe and the song begins to take a spiral we kind of lose that energy and momentum just for some straightforward death metal and then we explore some more somber ideas and then there is, uh, what was the word I used? I don't remember. It started with uh, a D-E prefix, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, distress? Yeah, there it is. That's a D-I. That's not a prefix at all. <laughs> uh, distress, but the music around it was warming. There was like a choir going on, and they were very bright and warm, but also distant and hazy. As far as the very clean production goes, I couldn't understand what the choir was saying at all, which is really odd now that I think about it. I picked up the growls and couldn't figure out the enunciation in the choir. Maybe there's a purpose to that. And we eventually just continue to spiral out until we hit that super somber moment that I loved at like uh, 15 minutes in or something like that. Uh, just a gorgeous moment before bringing it back up to just blast beats, 16th note picking, and brass and, and strings sitting on the outside once again uh, doing chords. And it brings us to the outro, which is just a gorgeous, somber outro. It is a song that starts high and ends low. And it doesn't feel like it has ups and downs, although we certainly have movements between the more aggressive metal and the more somber acoustic quieter bits. We, we have some of these hills overall, but the song starts out with positivity and just spirals down. It's, it's a constant roller coaster towards the ground. Free fall drop, as we might say. I mean, this could represent a lot of things. It's called The Sun, The Moon, and The Star. I have absolutely nothing to take from the title. Is there anything else I want to talk about here? I mean, it's an epic, so the, the structure is linear or linear-ish. There was a chorus that we heard a few times, but... The drumming was solid. The bass was disgusting. <laughs> What a sound, just distorted and some of the thickest strings. Uh, see, on my bass, I got super slinkies, Ernie Ball, uh, because I like the, 
the impact of it. It works really well for playing heavier rock and metal, which is what I bought the bass for. Uh, don't know if anyone knows this, I was in a band for a little bit in my early to mid-20s. Uh, and we played heavy rock, hard rock, post-hardcore adjacent kind of stuff. Um, and I really liked the impact of it. And that's what this reminds me of, but it was even gnarlier than that. Like, these are just some really fat strings. Uh... I like the tons of compression too. There's a lot of percussive element to it and even a rattle. I I, I really love the, the bass tone here. Yeah, let's hear some lyrics. So this is a fairly linear story, which I believe is what the uh, requester stated. Let me double check this. It's a melodic death metal song that tells one of my favorite fantasy stories in music. Yeah, story is a perfect word for this. It feels more like uh, poetry put to music than anything else. The first four verses, uh, three verses. Well, technically four. Yeah, we're going to go with four. Is the back and forth, the flip-flopping of a person who was once content with their life. The opening line says, Long been complacent with the hand I've been dealt. But there's a, a tugging at their heart. Maybe they want more. So they think about it. And then the fear of failure hits them. And they're like, you know what? I'll just stick with what I have. It's got to be pretty good. but Or sorry, it's, it's worked fine for me so far. But then that tugging is still there. So eventually, they go for it. And verse 4 is actually a chorus that we'll hear throughout the album and is the the lesson of the song. I think it's really interesting that the song starts out at the beginning. We, we get this linear bit here. We jump to the end. We see the conclusion. And then we come back and see how we got there. It's interesting because it's sort of like the process of in media res which is starting in the middle and then backtracking but we actually do that in the middle <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen anything else um skip ahead to the ending in the middle of a story whether that's film or book or even song i think it works very well because it creates a question because it doesn't really tell what happened it says mother father sister i'm sorry for what i've done but the man i've become is no longer oh wait no 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 no. this changes i should have read the whole thing this line the beginning of it does come up later mother father sister i'm sorry for what i've done so actually there's no skip here but it says, uh, the man I've become is no longer content with comfort and home. That final section of this verse is changed in the subsequent times we hear it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel dumb. Anyways, from here on out, we continue the story and they search out. They, they leave home and search for glory, as he states. Um, and something that comes up often is cold. The cold wind that chills me to the bones, and cold is the knowledge that this is why I abandoned my home. So, physically and emotionally and mentally regret this. Uh, they're growing cold based on uh, this decision to leave home. Eventually, though, somebody finds them and says, take comfort Uh, and burn away your sorrow in the cleansing fire of power. Colors swirling around me, shifting landscapes, obey my power, uh, obey my every command, but I still don't possess the power to fill the emptiness. And so they continue to amass this power, which, at least in this context on the surface, is a sort of magical power, a command of elements. At one point even says, I've hailed to the cosmic masters and walked to the astral plane and traveled to distant world. Time like a river flows, but the one thing I don't have the power to change, the only thing that matters. And so it's a person who 
leaves home in search for glory, finds that glory, finds that conquest, becomes immensely powerful and can control things beyond most mortals' grasp. And all they want is to return home. They want their family, father, mother, sister. That's the story that they want to share. Is that sometimes glory and power and having your name written in the history of time is not all it's chalked up to be? Is that the phrase? Why am I blanking out on that? Uh, and that sometimes the best life lived is the simple one you have. And that ex certainly explains all the ups and downs of the story. It explains the shifting sound from the triumphant epic beginning tr to the somber regret almost towards the end. Yeah, it fits, it fits pretty well. Before I wrap this up, one quick note. It's my last subjective thing because the video is over. I really think a lot of this would have, would have worked better with the clean vocals. They were far too sparse for this track, and as I mentioned, the harshes just don't carry the emotion of most of these sections very well. The static, cold element that comes through the vocals, it's just not... It doesn't line up with what's being said. It can certainly be used for impact, even 50-50 it against the, the cleans, but I think that we could have wrangled out a lot more emotion, melody, counterpoint out of our opening few verses if we had stuck with the idea of using a clean instead of a harsh. And we could have even shifted gradually from the clean to the harsh to show the transformation of the character. Like, there's so many ways, both from just a subjective perspective, because I tend to enjoy melody more, and even an objective perspective of using the music to showcase a component of the story that I think would have really made this shine if they had just taken a step back and said, what if we don't do this as a metal song? What if we just happen to have metal components in it? All right, I'm done. Those are my thoughts on Ether Realms, the sun, the moon, the star. This is where you all come in. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and perspectives. Put them down in the comment section. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me on this. I think most of y'all are going to disagree. Uh, I, I see a lot of pushback whenever I talk about softening up metal. But, uh, you know, that's just, it's just my opinion. It's what I like to listen to. When you're done commenting, head up into the description box. In there is a link for Linktree. It'll take you here. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Uh, as I said earlier, I think my Mastodon is in there too if you're interested in seeing what I talk about on social media. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that's, that's that one. <laughs> I don't know what order this goes in, so I don't know if this wraps it up for the day or if the next one wraps it up for the day. That's The schedule got real weird this week, and I mean, as we see, we have three videos here on a Thursday. So uh, I'm just going to let that one be. I'll see you all tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. We're going to wrap up this week's theme and wrap up this whole week, kind of. I mean, there's no end to the week. There isn't a day I don't release something. I probably should put a stop somewhere. <laughs> There's a refresh coming up. Maybe I'll do it then. All right. Uh, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.